Good morning, everybody. We're going to get started. I'm going to now call to order the North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District Budget um, Committee meeting. And feel free to follow along on the screen screens. The presentation will be available for your viewing pleasure on all of these screens as they go through the presentation. Um, and uh, I'm excited to get moving forward here. Um, let's have everybody introduce themselves. Uh, we all know who we're working with. We'll start from my right. Good morning. I'm Commissioner Mark Shaw. Good morning, I'm Ben West, Clackamas County Commissioner, Acting Vice Chair. Uh, good morning, I'm Clackamas County Commissioner, Martha Schrader. Good morning, <clears throat> NCPRD Director, <clears throat> Paul Savas. I'm David Chitzazan, uh, Committee Member. Uh, Luca Dorito, Committee Member. Uh, Callie Gantner, Financial Analyst. Kia Selle, District Director. Uh, Macy Gast, Committee Member. Sean Buchanan, Committee Member. <laughs> And there's just four members of the public, right? Committee members? Okay. There's nobody online then? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, correction director, not commissioner in this role, just to, for the record. I will now open the floor for nominations for chair. I nominate David Chitsazan for his chair. I second that. Uh, David uh, Chitsazan has been nominated. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, nominations are closed. Clerk, will you please call the poll for us? Mr. Buchanan. Aye. Director Savas. Aye. Mr. Dorito. Aye. <laughs> Director Scholl. Aye. Mr. Gast. Aye. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Vice Chair West? Aye. Vice Chair, the motion is 8-0. The vote is 8-0. I am now going to turn the meeting over to our newly elected chair, Mr. Chitsan. Please take over. Thank you. Uh, I will now open the floor for nominations for secretary. I nominate Sean Buchanan as secretary. I second. Sean Buchanan has been nominated. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, nominations are closed. Clerk, would you please call the poll? Director Schrader. Aye. Mr. Gast. Aye. Director Scholl. Aye. Mr. Dorito. Aye. Director Savas. Aye. Mr. Buchanan. Aye. Vice Chair West. Aye. Chair Chitz is on. Aye. Chair, the motion is 8-0. Uh, the vote is 8-0. Uh, Sean Buchanan has been elected secretary. I will now ask Kia Selly, director, North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District, to present the budget message. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Based on the numbers alone, the NCPRD budget appears to be a larger budget than it actually is. This is primarily due to two reasons. One, interfund transfers and restricted funds. Interfund transfers inflate the budget. This is because the funds are already a part of the fund balance, and when transfers are initiated, they are recorded as additional revenue in one fund and an expense in another fund. Thus, it appears that it's new revenue when, in fact, it's the same revenue just moving from one fund to another. Restricted funds are only available for a special purpose, such as a system development charge fund for capital projects. You see here in this slide that there's a 16% decrease between the last fiscal year budget and fiscal year 24-25 proposed budget, a total reduction of 9.2 million. The reason for this budget decrease is largely due to interfund transfers. Yet again, interfund transfers inflate the size of the budget. Another reason for the decrease in the yes. fiscal year 24-25 proposed budget is a new approach to budget development that bases the proposed budget on prior year actuals and not the budget allocations from the previous two years. 
Having said that, NCPRD is not yet back to pre-pandemic levels of service, so we will be watching this really carefully over the next fiscal year to make sure that we have the sufficient resources. This budget also includes, I want to note for you, it's there in yellow, a one-time county general fund allocation of $139,668, which is intended to offset the impacts from an increase in allocated costs for county services because the methodology for allocated costs recently changed. The next five slides are for historical purposes only and only show fiscal year 21-22 when NCPRD was a line of business under Clackamas County Business and Community Services. NCPRD is now a standalone department. Each slide shows a different NCPRD fund. This is, oh, excuse me, that was the general fund was the previous one. And the next three slides show each of the three system development charge zones. This is zone one, zone two, and zone three. This last slide shows fiscal year 21-22 for the capital projects fund. This slide shows the proposed fiscal year 24-25 budget and the last three fiscal years for comparison. You'll also notice that NCPRD now has its own general fund, Fund 213, which is separate from that of Clackamas County. It typically does not receive any county general funds. NCPRD personnel is included in the line item materials and services because staff are actually contracted employees of Clackamas County. In fiscal year 24-25, you see a reduction in the budget for materials and services as compared with last fiscal year because funding for part-time staffing has been reduced based on prior year actuals. As I mentioned earlier, while this budgeting strategy typically results in a more accurate budget, we'll need to watch this line item carefully in fiscal year 24-25 because service levels of the past two years were lower than pre-pandemic levels, and now we're seeing a slow but steady return to pre-pandemic demand for services. Also, of the 11.5 million shown in materials and services, 8 million is for personnel. Lastly, over the last three fiscal years, general fund expenditures have increased to fund ongoing capital projects, primarily the projects at the Concord property, which include a new park, playground, and phase one renovations to a community center. NCPRD collects system development charges on development from three separate zones. Represented here is zone one, which is the city of Milwaukee and the urban growth management agreement area. In general, SDC revenue generation has slowed recently with increases in inflation and interest rates. And because SDC re uh, revenue generation is tied to factors outside of our control, we're very conservative with our forecasts. This is the SDC fund for zone two. This zone is located south of SDC zone one and includes two active capital projects, which explains the significant expenditures in fiscal year 23-24. These projects include the improvements at the Concord property, which I mentioned earlier, and the park at the Jennings Lodge campus, which is currently in the design phase. This is the SDC fund for zone three, which is located east of I-205. And growth in this area, similar to growth in zone two, has been slow. This slide details fund 480, the capital projects fund, which provides resources for design and construction of capital improvement projects, new capital assets, and capital repair and re replacement projects for existing assets. The proposed budget for fiscal year 24-25 is based on forecasted design and, and construction costs and represents a realistic and achievable work plan for the NCPRD planning and development staff team. 
the majority of the funds budgeted for fiscal year 24-25 are for construction of the park playground and community center at the Concord property, which is currently under construction and slated for completion next summer in 2025. A small amount of these funds are allocated for the system plan project, initial design work for a park at the Justice property, and the completion of the, the design work for the park at the Jennings Lodge campus. In the previous fiscal year shown, the budgeted funds represented district priorities, but were aspirational in terms of staff capacity and typical timelines for design and construction projects, which is why funds were often moved from year to year instead of actually being fully depleted. This last slide is a summary of significant changes. For the first change noted, as I mentioned before, interfund transfers inflate the budget because they're logged as both an expenditure and a revenue in the budget as per accounting best practices. For fiscal year 24-25, interfund transfers are now 4.3 million from 13.6 million in the previous fiscal year. For the second change noted, we've changed our approach to budgeting to increase transparency by budgeting for administration staff and county allocated charges to the NCPRD administration program instead of spreading these, these costs across all of the program areas. For the third item, the negotiations for the sale of the Wichita property continue with North Clackamas School District, but the expectation is that a new agreement will be negotiated soon, so an additional $100,000 has been budgeted to cover the cost of using NCSD fields and gyms for recreation programming. The increase in the nutrition budget is also higher simply due to demand for older adult um, meal services and programs as well as inflationary impacts on the cost of food. Second to last increase, the parks and facility maintenance budget reduction of 98% is due to the termination of the lease at the Clackamas School property. This property will soon be sold. And lastly, construction is underway at the Concord property as I mentioned. Um, the campus of projects will be completed next summer in 2025, so capital expenditures will be higher than typical in the next fiscal year, fiscal year 24-25. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Do any members of the committee have any questions? I, I have some. If. <laughs> Um, I first want to say, excuse me, I first want to say thank you um, to the NCPRD members for answering my long list of questions. Um, I'm, I'm overly detailed, I am aware, but um, I think it's good to ask these questions. I wanted to clarify one item, which I, I think you just clarified in the presentation, I just want to make sure. Um, so like the planning and development department, which is on page 95, there were professional services of 205K that's zero now. That is the, those, that 205K is moving from that department to the administrative department. Is that, is that generally correct? I just want to make sure conceptually, I, I understand that like, um, professional services went from 205K last year to zero, um, that essentially that is going into the 900,000 or so addition. So that the 205,000 yeah. that was budgeted in 23-24 was for um, costs uh, concerning government change, or um, so it wasn't a personnel expenses. Oh. It was for governance change. That's the words. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. So, okay. Should I clarify that that's a professional services contract? Uh, just to clarify, David, that was a um, professional services contract. Okay. Oh. Please. Um, the records in the back of the county. One of the things I just wanted to... Um, Clarify for the committee 
Okay, now, thank you. So um, one of the things that we have really focused on in the past, the finance department, is distributing administrative costs across the organization. And you'll notice here that we've done just the opposite. And the reason is because it's all the same fund. So we were allocating um, general funds to general funds. And what happened is, um, so the administrative costs got buried in all the other departments and you never really saw it. And so it didn't make sense to allocate funds um, to, the, to the same fund. You don't, excuse me, you don't normally do that. So that's why um, the, the, excuse me, and CPRD moved the administrative dollars so it'd be very transparent because in prior budgets it looked like there was no, um, no administrative costs. Uh, Commissioner Savas? Yeah. Um, you know, we're on that subject a little bit. I just want to just clarify for my colleagues uh, on the board as well as the budget committee members that uh, in Kia, your help with this would um, be appreciated. Try to understand that how much of the Concord building will be used for administrative services. I think that's something that I think everyone thought maybe it was just a community center in its entirety. But um, because there was an allocated cost from the county for offices at DSB, um, I don't know when that changeover, probably a couple years ago, occurred where that reduction in allocated cost so I know, Cindy, you've done a lot of good work um, in the absence of the director, and then Kia, you just stepped in lately. I have a lot, a lot, of, a lot more questions next year or during this year, but I want to get an idea about the percentage of the building being used for that, and also any long-term liabilities um, that are out there, again, kind of early, but hopefully with the next, within a year, if there's any building liabilities, as was discussed here a year ago at this very budget meeting, uh, it'd be nice to know what those are. All right, well, thank you for your questions, Director Savas. So to answer your first question about the, uh, the renovated community center at Concord, we haven't named it yet, so that's why we have that long <laughs> title. Um, so I would say that I don't have the exact square footage. I would approximate um, about 10% or perhaps even less of that building will be used for NCPRD administration. We are not going to renovate the entire building. I think we've talked about that because we don't have the resources to do that. We are going to renovate, um, we have already renovated some of the office space. Um, the rest of the building has yet to be fully renovated and um, I would say that we are renovating about 50% of that building, um, which um, again is because our resources are constrained, but also um, because it represents the sweet spot with uh, what we can sustain currently with our operations. Um, and right now we do not have a permit of occupancy, so uh, technically that is not um, being, that site is not being used for NCPRD administration yet. It will be as of summer of 2025. Your second question, please remind me. Well, I mean, it's not really a question, but I just want to get a sense that within a year's time we'll have a better idea of our outstanding liabilities or potential liabilities for properties or buildings that the district owns. Absolutely. So we, we already are developing a list of um, deferred maintenance, um, near-term deferred maintenance, and happy to have that discussion with you um, whenever the time is right. Okay. Thank you. Any other, co any other comments from anyone? I have uh, Commissioner Shell. I have one question about the 11 underdeveloped parks. Is there any plan to look at potent potentially selling some of those in the future to balance out increasing maintenance costs for the parks you do um, concentrate on? I appreciate that question, Director Scholl. So um, we don't have any plans beyond the sale of the Wichita property and the Clackamas property at this time. Um, but your point is well taken in that we have 11 undeveloped properties. So our goal is to really focus on 
developing those properties so that we can better serve district customers. And, um, and, um, and we will look at those properties through the process of the system plan to determine what the priorities are for investments. And I will say too that I remain open to whether um, there are opportunities for disposition of some of those other properties if they don't fit with the priorities that the, that the community establishes in that system plan. Um, but I will also say that you will, you will see that um, disposition will be taken very, will, be, will proceed very carefully okay. because um, we're really looking and taking the long view and don't want to dispose of a property if, um, if, it's, if it potentially has a good fit in later years because it's really hard to sometimes mm -hmm. regain that opportunity to, to purchase land just because the, oh, yeah. the region's developing. Okay, thank you. Uh, committee member Shaw. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Director Scholl's question actually brought a uh, question that I had um, to mind about the, I believe in, under the capital improvement plan there was um, around a million dollars budgeted for land acquisition. And I imagine that this might be directed by the, the systems plan that might be happening. But my question is, was there a specific piece of land that was um, eyed or is it more of just in case something comes up and there's an opportunity? That's a good question. Um, so at this time, I'd prefer not to talk about the property acquisition only because it, it will, um, could adversely impact the district in terms of the, those negotiations. But um, yes, the system plan is driving priorities for investments. Um, and I hope that we'll be able to share more with the community about the good news around this potential property acquisition in the coming months. I have uh, one more clarifying uh, question. I have two more, but uh, one more uh, clarifying question about the Wichita Center. I just want to make sure I understand um, your comments correctly. You mentioned that there's ongoing or that we're expecting to negotiate the uh, extension of the Wichita Center. Is that right? Yeah. I've there is uh, negotiations are currently underway for disposition of the Wichita Center, and uh, those are active negotiations. Okay, and uh, there's not. Uh, okay, I think I must have misheard. I, I thought you mentioned something that there's, um, there is, uh, it is, um, ex being extended with North Clackamas School District. No. So because the negotiations are currently underway and mm -hmm. we expect those negotiations to be completed soon, we've allocated $100,000 in the fiscal year 24-25 yeah. proposed budget to support recreation programming because NCPRD needs to pay the school district for use of gyms and facilities beyond um, the termination of that agreement. That agreement currently allows for um, uh, access to NCSD gyms and facilities for free, but it's based on an agreement that includes other terms. Got it. Okay, so the 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 negotiating right now is for the disposition of it is is with NCSD or it's outside of that. Director um, Savage. You know, so the uh, school district. Uh, requested to purchase the property yeah. late last year. Mm -hmm. So there's only one party that we are negotiating with. Got it. Okay. That's thank you. Thank you very much for clarifying. Okay. Understood. Um, and then my, my other question, I just wanted to clarify on Milwaukee Bay Park, and this could just be misinformation I heard somewhere, um, but I forget who I was talking to. Someone mentioned that there was some sort of grant that was expiring in June of this year. You mentioned in the email to me that the funds have not expired, and I just wanted to clarify there's nothing that is expiring with those. The funds are not expiring in June, and the resources are still allocated in the fiscal okay. year 24 25 okay. budget. Okay, perfect. I just wanted to clarify that. Um, and then um, this is more of a, a, a question, I think, for the commission, just because you mentioned that there's no information at this time, that, but that project is on, is on hold um, from 2022-23. And I was just wondering, um, 
for the commission what is the main reason that it's on hold and if we're hoping this year is the year it starts because I know it's you know been a full budget cycle since then which well, project are you talking uh, about? Milwaukee Bay Park sorry I'll, I'll be as I'll be as brief as I can and maybe the administrator can fill in any blanks but um, there there have been there's three agreements required to move that move that and the city of Milwaukee um, uh, has um, chosen to um, in the courts uh, deal with a interpretation of one of the terms or the state statute uh, on how uh, of a certain process so because of that is delayed because of the action the city has taken okay so in, in theory then if that court system was resolved the process would move on to the other stages. we're hoping we can finalize a third agreement a what finalize the third agreement finalize the third agreement okay okay Thank you um, very much. I just, I, yeah, I was just curious because, you know, it seems like that park's been going on in planning for a while. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Um, uh, I will now open the public hearing. I will begin with those present in person and then those registered on Zoom. Please state your name and area of residence. You will have three minutes per person. Are there any public comments? If you would like to testify on the North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District budget, please use the raise hand feature and I will call on you in the order received. Mr. Chair, I have one hand raised. I will begin with Jeanette DeCastro. Please state your name and area of residence. You will have three minutes. Hello, good morning. My name is Jeanette DeCastro. Uh, pronouns are she and they. I live in unincorporated Clackamas County um, in sub area three, which is close to Sunnyside and 122nd. Um, I'm sneaking away from work for a few minutes. I wish I could be there in person with you all. Um, I just want to say some words of support for North Clackamas uh, Parks and Recreation District. Um, thank you for um, continuing to support the parks, which I view as essential and really critical to our communities and our well-being. Um, and thank you to the Budget Committee for your hard work. Um, and we look forward to continuing uh, public involvement through the District Advisory Committee. Um, and certainly, I <clears throat> personally would love to see you know, more parks and would love to see more swim lessons. And we're just really excited to keep supporting the district. Uh, thank you so much. If you would like to testify on the NCPRD budget, please use the raise hand feature. and I will call on you in the order received. Mr. Chair, I do not have any hands raised. Thank you, Tony. Uh, seeing no one else who wishes to speak. I will now close the public hearing. Do any members of the committee have any questions or discussions? Uh, hearing no further questions, I will now entertain a motion on the budget. I move that the North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District Budget Committee approve the fiscal year 24-25 budget in the amount of 48,281,237, as presented with appropriations of 38,876,404, and impose the district's maximum permanent tax rate of $0.5382 per 1,000 of assessed value within district boundaries. Second. It has now been moved and seconded that the North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District Budget Committee approve the budget for the fiscal year 24-25 in the amount of $48,281,237 with appropriations of $38,876,404 and impose the district's maximum permanent tax rate of 0.5382 dollars per 1,000 of assessed value within the district boundary. Is there any further discussion? 
Awesome. And thank, again, I, I want to say one more time, thank you again, everyone, for answering uh, the questions that we've had and for being transparent with everything. Uh, hearing no further discussion, uh, clerk, would you please call the poll? Director Savas. Aye. Mr. Buchanan. Aye. Director Schrader. Aye. Mr. Gass. Aye. Director Scholl. Aye. Mr. Dorito. Aye. Vice Chair West. Aye. Chair Chitz is on. Aye. Chair, the result is 8-0. The vote is 8-0 and the motion passes. Is there any further business before the committee? Hearing none, the committee is adjourned.